Hello, in this video we will be reviewing the sliding filament model in relation to sarcomeres. When I ask you questions, I suggest that you pause and try to answer the questions yourself. Reviewing in this way is the best way to figure out what you know and what you don't know. So what we are looking at here, at the top are sarcomeres which are relaxed, and in the bottom picture, sarcomeres that are contracted. I'd like us to begin with the relaxed sarcomeres. Okay. From here to here, makes up one sarcomere. You can see that's one sarcomere. Next suit is another sarcomere. Many sarcomeres make up one what? Many sarcomeres make up one myofibril. the cytoskeleton of the cell. A myofibril is as long as the muscle itself. So the myofibril, the skeleton, is as long as the muscle itself. Just like your skeleton is as long as your body. The myofibril is as long as the cell itself and it is partitioned into these sarcomeres. Everything we're about to describe is made out of protein. So this disc and this disc are the starts and ends of the sarcomere. What do we call the structures? A sarcomere runs from where to where? From Z disc. Z disc. Sarcomeres are made up of the smallest structural units of a muscle cell. What is the name of the smallest structural units of the muscle cell? They are called myofilaments, and examples of myofilaments are actin and myosin. Which myofilament is this? This is actin. Is actin the thin or thick myofilament? Actin is the thin myofilament. What would that make this in red? This is myosin, the thick myofilament. Please note, I called the myofilaments the smallest structural units. The reason they're structural units is because actin and myosin will never what? Actin and myosin never ever change size. They stay the same size. Therefore, there will have to be some sort of other mechanism to make the sarcomere shorter, called the sliding filament model. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Because the sarcomere shortens, it's not a structural unit, it's a functional unit. Meaning, it is the sarcomere shortening that will produce muscle tension. 
See these little circles here? These are symbolizing the myosin heads. As you'll see in later videos, myosin heads grab onto the actin and they pull actin in towards the middle of the sarcomere, thereby making the sarcomere shorter. What do we call this structure that anchors myosin? We call this structure the M-line. It is in the middle of the sarcomere and it anchors myosin while the Z-disc anchors actin. Those are the names of the structure of a sarcomere. Sarcomeres are the reason for striations or stripes. Some parts look darker and some parts look lighter under a microscope. And what defines that is how much protein is in that area. When we look under a microscope, we stain for the amount of protein. The more protein, the darker a given location will look. There is an I band, an A band, and an H zone. If I go like this, does this correspond to the I band, A band, or H zone? This is the I band, because I stands for what? Light. This is an area that doesn't have that much protein in it. Why? Actin is thin. And thin means takes up less space. Therefore, it will be lighter under the microscope. The I-band, by definition, is actin by itself. If I go like this, what is this referring to? This is the H zone, and it is myosin by itself. Finally, we have this, and this is the A band for dark. This is the dark band, and what does it correspond to? It corresponds to wherever myosin is. Why will the A band be darker than the I band? What about the A band makes it darker than the I band? Because myosin is thicker, it will stain darker under the microscope. So wherever myosin is will always be darker than wherever actin is by itself. So notice where the A-band ends in the top left. We would go back to the I-band. And this continues across the length of the myofibril, leading to stripes or striations. Which part would be darker under a microscope? The H zone or this part of the A-band? where I put the arrow.
The answer is where I put the arrow. Why? Because the H zone is myosin by itself. But where I put the arrow, there's myosin and actin. Myosin plus actin is more protein than myosin by itself. Therefore, more protein equals stain starker. So there will be in the middle of the A band a slightly lighter area corresponding to the H zone. During the sliding filament model, myosin heads are going to grab onto the actin and they're going to pull the actin in towards the M line. Notice myosin will not change size and actin will not change size. The amount that they overlap will increase and that will make the sarcomere shorter. That is what we see in the bottom picture. In the bottom picture, myosin has not changed size. Let me prove that to you. Okay, if you were to put your fingers on the relaxed myosin and compare that length to the contracted myosin, you should see that it is the exact same length. And same with the actin. Myosin and actin have not changed size. What changed is how close the actin is to the M line. Because that overlap has increased, the sarcomere is now shorter. What you probably see is in this contracted cell, sarcomere number one is shorter, and sarcomere number two is shorter. That's because in a given cell, if it receives an action potential, every single sarcomere will shorten. This is because of T-tubules giving every single myofibril access to the action potential stimulus. Okay, So you can see that the relaxed myofibril is longer than the contracted myofibril. That's because that overlap shortens the sarcomere. When we shorten the sarcomere, we shorten the myofibril. When we shorten the myofibril, we shorten the muscle fiber cell. When we shorten the cell, we'll shorten the organ, the muscle. During a muscle contraction, for the H zone, the A band and the I band. Okay, during tension production in a sarcomere, do each one separately. Will they increase in size, decrease in size, or stay the same? So go ahead and go through for all of them. Say, will the A band stay the same size, increase in size, or decrease in size? Will the H zone stay the same size, increase their size, or decrease in size? Do that for all three of these. Um, and the way you should do that is to, number one, define what they are. The A band is this. The H zone is this. And then you say, would that thing change size during a muscle contraction? Why don't you go ahead and try to do that? Let's start with the A band. The A band is by definition wherever myosin is. Does myosin change size during a contraction? No. Myosin and actin are structural and they do not change size. Therefore, the A band stays the exact same size. What is the I band by definition? The I band is wherever actin is by itself. Because the overlap has increased, and now more actin is closer to the M line, more actin 
overlaps with myosin. Therefore, as you can see in this picture, the I band is shorter. That's because the amount of actin alone in this picture at the top, there's that much actin alone. In the picture in the bottom, there's only this much actin alone because the overlap has increased. Therefore, the I band during a contraction shortens. Since the H zone is myosin by itself, it would make sense that that would also shorn. At the top, I have drawn, colored in, the H zone, which is the myosin by itself in a relaxed, relaxed sarcomere. In the bottom, I have drawn the H zone during a contraction. And you can see it's a much shorter. Because more actin is brought in closer to the midline, there's less myosin by itself in the middle. In this way, by sliding actin over the myosin, we shorten the sarcomere and produce tension. This is what we refer to as the sliding filament model.